but uh, just delighted about all the responses that we had here. I want to talk to you about two quick things, and I want to bring you a, a quick message. I know our time is short this morning, but um, I... I wanted to talk with you just briefly about next Sunday. The next Sunday is our Ford at War Hill offering. In case you have not heard, we bought the new property. It is now ours. We're excited about that. Amen. <laughs> what that means is we're, we're going to be moving forward, and as we're moving forward together, our, our ultimate goal is to give this building to our youth for a youth center, uh, to build all new children's ministry space, to have about five times the parking. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. And uh, just under 1,000 seats in our new sanctuary so we can cut down from all the multiple services. And it's going to be a blessing, and we're looking forward to that. Now, we were going to take this offering last month, but we postponed because we were able to give generously to help the churches that lost everything in Louisiana. And so I want to ask you to be prayerfully considering this. And I want God to speak to your heart, to your family's heart about this. The Lord put a, a certain amount on my heart, and it was one that I, I said, well, that was going to be a, a little bit of a stretch. And I said, okay, Lord, I'm not real sure how that's going to work, but I remembered back in the day when we were building the gym. It was a long time ago. I, I, I don't even think we had but maybe one child at that point, and um, you know, we just had Bethany at that stage, and, and things were really tight. But we made a commitment every month to help move this church forward, and literally thousands of souls have been saved because families came together. We made those commitments, and we moved forward together. And we're believing that God's going to help us do that again uh, as we build this next stage of, of what God has provided for us here at War Hill. Now, I, I got that number in my head, and I, I finally said, okay, God, that's what we'll do. And let me just show you how God works. I came up with that, that amount. I said, okay, Lord, here we are. Show me, what, show me how. Show me what you want. I was invited to speak a, uh, a, a, a two lectures at a college. They, there was a certain admission fee to be in the room for those lectures. When they wrote me the check, or they brought me the check and said, who do you want it made out to? I saw that it was exactly what God had spoken to my heart. So I said, just make it out to the church. Come on, amen. If God gives it, God will provide. Amen. So I'm believing that God's going to lead you as well. Why don't we pray over this message? You can't go anywhere right now anyways. It's raining cats and dogs. I might just preach a little longer. Amen. Some of you went, yay. Some, some of you went. <laughs> All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the joy of the Lord that is our strength. I ask you, open this message to us today. But I'm asking you also, speak to these families that are here, how they can join with my family as we sow into the next step of what you're doing here at War Hill. I thank you for the massive donation that came from the architects this week. Lord, I pray that you're going to bless them, bless all those who are coming along beside us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God's good. Also, don't forget on October 1st is Waypoint Day. We're asking you to bring your, your extra items for the yard sale they're having um, or to join us and serve that day or just come out and enjoy what's happening. Waypoint supports everything we do here as a church. They're a part of our church, and you don't want to miss that. Can you hear me okay out there today? Amen. I'm hearing this slight roar. It's putting some of you to sleep. So if you fall asleep today, it's not my sermon. All right. I want to bring you a message today entitled Changed. Changed this comes out of Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse number 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse number 4. I wish that I had had, had the, the resources to have an illustration. You know how you always see those ads that say, uh, this is what they look like before meth, this is what they look like after meth? You know what I'm talking about, how horrible those are? Well, I believe in uh, 25 years uh, here, we should have some pictures that say, here they are before Jesus, here they are after Jesus, because I've watched people go from looking awful to blessed and, and, and prosperous because Jesus can change your life. Can I get an amen? amen. Ecclesiastes 8, chapter, uh, or chapter 8, verse number 4, reads like this. His command is backed by great power. No one can resist or question it. Speaking of the king, his command is backed by great power. No one can resist or question it. In the King James Version, the same verse reads like this. Where the word of a king is, there is power. When you get the word of the king, expect to have the power to make a change. Let me declare that again. When you hear the command of the king, get ready to have a change in your life. You see, there's a scripture that is misunderstood. But when it is properly applied, it's going to release this power into your life. 
That scripture is Revelation chapter 12, verse number 11. We've quoted this verse. I've grown up quoting this verse. It says this, And they have defeated him by the blood of the Lamb and by their testimony. Let's try that again. They have defeated him by the blood of the Lamb and by their testimony. You know, as I've grown up hearing that, I, I, I've missed some of the power of what that verse is saying. But I want to give it to you very simply today, and I want you to understand two things about this verse. First, the blood of the Lamb has been shed, and it will never lose its power. The blood of the Lamb was given once, Scripture says, on Calvary. He does not have to be crucified over and over and over again. He shed His blood one time, and His blood still flows and still washes clean and still changes lives. And a lot of people don't want to talk about the blood anymore because it's not something welcome in our modern world. It's the only hope for our modern world is the blood of Jesus Christ that washes us clean. Can I get an amen? The blood has been shed once, and it has settled, but... Your testimony has not yet been settled. If you are here, you are breathing, you're not through. Your testimony is not yet done. You see, a testimony is not just what we say, but it's what we can give supporting facts to back up. Okay? Let me say that again. A testimony is not just what we say, but what we can give supporting facts to back up. When we say, what is your testimony, in the sense of Christian faith, what we're asking you is to tell us three things. Are you ready for these? Here's what a testimony is. Now, we're about to go into a new series here called uh, That Every Seat Has a Story. That's a testimony. And here's a testimony. A testimony consists of these three parts. Who you were before you found Christ, how you found Christ, and how your life has changed since you found Christ. Okay, let's go over those again. How you lived before Christ, how you found Christ, and how your life has changed since you found Christ. We ask for these three components because where there is a true manifestation of Jesus who was called the Word become flesh, where the Word of the King is, there is power. And the Bible says that in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. When Jesus, the Word, comes into your life, there is wonder-working power that always leaves you changed. Going to get an amen. amen. While I was in Africa last week, I, I was privileged to, in this special session that we were in to hear numerous testimonies. Ray and I were talking about those on Friday and almost joking a little bit about it because uh, when you're over there, it, it's not real shocking to hear someone say, you know, we were serving voodoo and our child died and a missionary came and raised our child from the dead and, and then uh, now we serve Jesus. Now, did you catch that? It's almost flippant. They go like, yeah, they raised them from the dead. And we're telling these stories, this one was raised from the dead, this one was raised from the dead, this one was raised from the dead. And some of you are looking at me like, what? Over there, it's almost just secondary to hear of these great miracles because there's so much confusion over which God to serve. There's so much confusion. You know what? I didn't say this in any of the services, but I feel this in my heart right now. God wants the generation of believers to rise up who will resist the confusion of the enemy and they'll settle the fact of this is the way it is to serve God. Amen. Amen. Shake yourself. Don't go to sleep in this rain. Come on now. Amen. All right. So while I was there, it was awesome to hear people talk about the difference that Jesus makes. How many of you know Jesus makes a difference? Amen. Jesus. Tell somebody around you Jesus makes a difference. I want to share just a few of these testimonies with you this morning, the ones that really stood out to me the most. There were all these testimonies of being raised from the dead and all these different miracles and things that happened, but these stood out to me the most of what we heard. The first was of a man who began like this. Now remember the components of a testimony of who I was before Christ, how I found Christ, and what my life has been like since Christ. And this man began to share his testimony, and he said, I was a Muslim. I would have been a Muslim, raised a Muslim, lived as a Muslim for 20-something years of my life. And, and he said, uh, at, living as a Muslim, I, I had uh, a lot of struggles, a lot of problems. He said, uh, there were a lot of things that I went through. And, uh, but then somebody came and told me about Jesus. He said, I felt like I could never move forward while I was a Muslim. But then somebody told me about Christ. And then he made this declaration. He, he said, as I surrendered my life to Christ, everything began to change. In his words... 
These words that he would declare would literally bring this, this massive crowd to a roaring cheer as he said this. He said, when I was a Muslim, the only thing I owned was an old, broken bicycle. He said, that's all that I possessed in this world was an old, broken bicycle. He said, but since Jesus has saved me, I now have two cars. Now, they cheered when he said that. Why didn't you cheer when I said that? You see, because it's a different world for us. But you've got to understand the concept of the world of which he was speaking. It might not seem radical to us because of where we live, but when you live in a culture where the odds are that you will never even own a broken bicycle, much less ride, not in say own, but ride regularly in a car, this was a tremendous testimony that said I had nothing and now God has given me more than enough is what he was declaring. He said Jesus has radically changed my life. Now let me be clear about this testimony. It was not a get rich quick testimony. It was not a name it or claim it testimony. But it was a testimony to many people who were torn between believing the gospel of Christ or the message of Muhammad. And when they heard that Jesus could change your hopelessness that, that they had lived in under Islam and could change it into a life full of blessings and encouragement and strength, they said we choose Jesus and people gave their life to Christ. Why? Because he said this is who I was, this is what I had, this is how I found Jesus, and now I'll never be the same. And it encouraged me tremendously. Another began to testify of the life that they had suffered under voodoo. How that they had spent all that they'd had to purchase sacrifices. How one sacrifice had led to another sacrifice and to another, which eventually left them broke. Only then their children became very ill and sick, and as they began to, to get desperate to find other ways, they were selling their items and borrowing money, trying to buy another sacrifice, hoping their children would get well. And one sacrifice led to debt and more debt and more debt, and their children were still sick, and then they did not even have the money to take them to the hospital. But then they said one day someone came into their village and told them the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as they told them the gospel of Jesus Christ, they thought, voodoo hasn't helped me. I'm going to try Jesus. So they began to try Jesus and gave their life to Christ. And would you figure out the enemy raised his ugly head and their children became sicker than they had ever been. And the devil showed up and said, you're going to have to go back to voodoo. You're going to have to go back or I'm going to kill your children. And the man said, I was headed back to buy another sacrifice to go back to voodoo. And he said, suddenly I stopped and I prayed. And I said, if you're God, then God, I need to show yourself strong. And I need you to touch my children. And he said, instantly his children began to get better. And he knew that Jesus Christ was the only true God. What is that testimony? Amen. Here's where I was. Here's how I found Jesus, and here's where I am. There should be a difference. You should be changed. Another began to testify, a lady began to testify of the life they had suffered under the powers of darkness of voodoo, how they had spent all that they had to purchase sacrifices, how that, that they had struggled to just trying to get things quiet. You see, every time they tried to go to sleep, all they could hear were the demonic voices yelling at them of their past and their failures and their struggles and their fear. And then one day, somebody showed up. This is what they said. They said, somebody showed up and told me about this man named Jesus. And when I found Jesus, I knew that he was God because when I believed in Jesus, I went home and I went to bed and everything was quiet and every voice was gone and I found that the Prince of Peace really brings peace. Why? Because Jesus changed my life. Now this excites me. Why? Because it's telling me a clear testimony. We're an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. You see, some of us, we're so dependent on the blood of the Lamb, we forgot the other side of the verse that I ought to be living like I'm under the blood of the Lamb. And if you're living under the blood of the Lamb, your life should be different from before to where you are now. Now, I'm trying to preach a sermon that's preached fairly good in the first two services, but I feel in something this morning that somebody needs a breakthrough, somebody needs some victory, somebody needs a change, and you need to understand what I've come to tell you today, that you need to begin to walk in the power of God's Word that will affect change in your life. 
if you look the same today that you looked before you raised your hand and prayed a prayer of salvation, then you need to find your way back to an altar. You need to bow your knee again, and you need to declare, Jesus, I need the wonder-working power to change who I really am. Now, let me just talk about these testimonies for a moment. You see, some of you go, a broken bicycle, what good is it to have a broken bicycle? If you're in a society that has nothing, listen, I understand this. The first time I went out of the country and I threw away our plastic plates just to see someone digging them out of the trash to become their finest plates, I began to understand we have more than we could ever imagine. Here in this society, this man, all he could do was set his broken bicycle up and dream about the wind blowing through his hair. All I can do anymore is dream about the wind blowing through my hair. Come on, amen. But all he could do was dream about the wind blowing through his hair because all he had was a broken example of what life was supposed to be. Are you with me? And he was following this broken example and living life, hoping someday he might actually know what life's really supposed to be like, what it was like to really ride a bike. You say, Pastor, what does that have to do with me? That's the other side of the world. I'm preaching to people right now who all you have are broken examples of what a family's supposed to be, what life's supposed to be, what freedom's supposed to be, what your joy's supposed to be, and your just hoping that someday you'll know what a change is. I have come to tell you how to know what that change is. His name is Jesus, and he can give you a before, how you meet him, and an after through his power. That's the kind of message I've come to you about. But Pastor Don, you don't understand. I don't have anything in common with that. Really? How many of you understand what I'm talking about when you go into debt just trying to get your kids to have what you couldn't have? Just trying to give your family something better than you ever had? Just hoping that someday there'll be a freedom in their, their lives to move to a place you can't be and you can't do it on your own and you can't fix that on your own. But what you need is Jesus who can take your family to places that you never dreamed possible. Here's another example. Some of you have been trying to outrun the things that scream at you in the night. Oh, no, nothing screams at me in the night. Really? How many times when you close your eyes? Let me just ask you this. How many times when you come through those doors do your sin start screaming at you? Failure, failure, put down your hands. You're not a believer. You're not really this. You're not really that. I have come to tell you when you embrace the wonder-working power of the blood of Jesus and begin to live it in victory in your life, you can raise your hands in freedom and declare, God is good. He has changed my life forever. Amen. I'm supposed to have a quiet intellectual sermon today, and it has not worked out. <laughs> See, the devil showed up with this rain in this service and turned my pretty sermon from the other ones into me yelling and stomping and snotting up here. Come on now, amen. But I'm telling you, there should be a change. If there's not a marked difference in your life, Pastor Danny said this to me as we were talking about the message. He said, what about those who have grown up in church and don't really feel like they ever had that encounter? Listen to me. You need to know the day you gave your life to Christ. You need to know the day you got saved. You need to know the day that you believed upon Jesus Christ. You need to know, I can still tell you what the carpet looked like. And I buried my little head in that orange 1970 carpet. Come on now, amen. Some of you are not laughing because you don't know how ugly it was. I buried my head in that shaggy carpet. Come on, I mean, glory to God. And, and I prayed to receive Jesus Christ. And I can tell you from that day forward, I've never been the same, just a child. But even in that, I can tell you other encounters in my life that when I've had to come back around and say, I will choose this day, who am I going to serve? I will reconfirm who I am in Christ. I will settle that this sin is not going to overtake me. Some of you have been overtaken by darkness far too long. It's time for you to shake yourself and declare, I am free by the blood of the Lamb. I am a blood ball child of the King. I'm not that person anymore. I'm going to serve Christ now. Amen. I know this is going to sound strange to some of you, but when you as a child of God walk into a dark filled place, there ought to be light because of the way you live. It ought to be different. It ought to be changed. But Pastor Don, you don't understand what's bound me. No, 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 no. You don't understand what I've come to preach to you today. I told you you can overcome by the blood of the Lamb that breaks every bondage of the enemy, and then you can live by the word of your testimony that declares, I'm not who I was anymore. But Pastor Don, you don't know how deep the bondage is. No, 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 you don't know how great his grace is. Where sin does abound, grace does much more abound in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody better come play or I'll preach all day up here. Come on. Amen. How many know God's good? Give him a praise this morning.
If you want to know how this sermon really preached, get a copy of the earlier service. Well, thank you, thank you. Here's two things I want to tell you. First, for those who know Christ, listen to me carefully. You should have a testimony that shows a difference between who you were and where you are. Or you can say, I used to do that, but then I got saved, and now I do this. It should be definitive in your life. And when those things that used to be start trying to creep into your what is, you need to push them back by the blood of the Lamb. And you need to be determined to honor your testimony. I'm not giving in. I'm not giving up. I'm not going back. I'm not running. I'm not turning around. I'm going to make it through this battle. I'm going to overcome, and I feel the Holy Ghost of God. I'm going to overcome by the blood of the Lamb. God's chosen us. He's called us. He's found us, and he wants us to make it. He wants us to live in such a way that he honors him. Secondly, as you stand with me today, if you're here today and you find yourself in the same situations as these testimonies, you all you have is a broken example of what God, God can do. It's time for you to have a whole example in Christ. Some of you here this morning, you're chased by all kind of burdens and struggles and you've dug yourself into a pit just trying to make things better yourself and you need Jesus to make it really better some of you can hear voices of your failure screaming to where there is no peace in your life I declare, declare the Prince of Peace wants to meet you here today with every head bowed and every eye closed the king sends the word that has the power to affect change say that again the king sends the word that has the power to affect change now most of you know me and you know how I close the service I normally say all right who needs this raise your hand who wants this raise your hand but right now right 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 here where we are I, I'm gonna be a little more radical today with you praying some of you today need to have a clear divide from where you were to where you're going I'm speaking to even people who prayed the prayer of salvation you need to have a clear divide from where you were to where you're going. And so what I want to help you find that today is I want to invite you to this altar to have a clear divide. Leave whatever it was where you are and come into something new in Christ. Whatever the bondage, whatever the struggle, it's time for you to leave it behind. It's time for you to be free. Who in this place would walk to this altar? Is there another that would walk toward this altar? leave it behind are there others as they're coming from around this building you're leaving it behind clear divide clear divide this is who I was this is what Jesus is doing in my life and everything's going to change everything's going to change everything's going to change whoa hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Everything's going to change. I want some prayer warriors to quickly get behind these and just gently lay your hands upon their shoulders and help me pray with them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God's changing lives right now. Everybody's still praying out there in the audience, if you would. These God's changing their lives. Things are happening. They've made a physical transformation. But some of you right where you are, right, right there. With everybody praying, I, unless you're coming to this altar, you don't need to be looking around. If you're here this morning, and you say, Pastor Don, I know there needs to be a clear distinction in my life. And I'm willing to make this day this day, uh, uh, I'm willing to make September 18th the day that Jesus took control of my life. I want to surrender everything to Jesus Christ. I want to know him. Nobody's looking around. Everybody's praying. These in the altar are receiving ministry right now. But if that's you, right where you are, I want to see your hands because I want to pray for you so that you might, today is the day you settle your life with Christ. One, two, three. I see, I see three hands going up. 
I see four hands going up. Where are there others? I see five hands going up. Are there others? And I feel the Holy Ghost of God in this place. Lives are being changed forever. Lives are being changed forever. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All right, you can put your hands down. Father God, I'm first going to pray for these in this altar. Lord, you see what's going on in their life. The clear change that's happening. As they've walked to this altar, God, they're yesterday being put exactly where it belongs behind them. And now let them have a settled moment. My goodness, I feel you, Holy Spirit. A settled moment with Jesus. A settled moment to where they know that God is changing their life and changing their situation. Where everything will be different. God, broken examples of families, Lord, are going to crumble into whole families. Broken examples of, of finance are going to crumble into whole finances, God. Broken examples of freedom are going to crumble into the freedom that God has intended for their lives. Father, I thank you, God, that the voices are going to stop, that the curses are going to be broken, that the freedom is going to come through Christ in the name of Jesus. I declare the freedom of the Lord. I declare the blessings of God. I declare the favor of God. I declare the end of the drought. I declare the blessing of the living God. That My goodness, I feel the Holy Ghost of God that comes upon their lives now. Now, in Jesus' name, by the authority of Christ, restoration, restore these families, restore them, restore them in the name above all names, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen. If you're standing out there while these are praying the altar, grab hands with someone near you if there's someone near you. There's been probably seven or eight that have lifted their hands that want to surrender their life to Christ. We're going to pray with them. The Bible says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that we would be born again. Let's pray that prayer of faith right now with these as they surrender their lives to Christ. Let's pray together. Jesus, by faith, I believe your promises. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I repent of my sins. Forgive me, Father. I give you my past, my present, and my future. In Jesus' name, I believe He came for me. He died for me. He now lives for me. And from this moment forward, God is my Father, Heaven is my home, and Jesus